there's not enough money for the resources. I mean, that, that's, you know, first and foremost. We're able to do the work that we do on behalf of the citizens of, of this parish because of tax dollars. Uh, when the citizens uh, pay their taxes, they fund uh, the operation, they fund the staff, they fund the salaries, they fund everything that we do here. Um, but the reality of what that funding actually looks like, I believe in the public perception, is much different from what we experience. It's kind of interesting because when I talk to friends and acquaintances who do not do this type of work and they have no idea what we do, they, they have no understanding of what actually goes on at juvenile court and what happens here and what we're trying to accomplish and a lot of times they don't want to hear about it because it's unpleasant and I, and I think a big misconception is that we deal with bad kids. Well they've done some bad things but they're not bad kids. The truth is um, that juvenile services operates off of a millage that was last passed in 1957. That means that right now as we stand here today, we are operating from the budget of taxes collected based on something that was raised in 1957. Well, um, I would challenge anyone to uh, be paid whatever salary it was in 1957 and try to live today. I, buy a house today, a car today, to do anything that they want to do. I mean, the, I think the price of gas might have been a quarter a gallon at that time. I mean, when you, when you consider those things, you understand that we're being asked to provide a place for rehabilitation for, for children and families. And we're being asked to keep society safe, but not necessarily funded at the level that we need to in order to provide the services uh, that we do. But the most important thing really is government can't raise kids. What's gonna solve the problem is not a judge and a probation officer. Ultimately, what solves the problem is teachers, coaches, ministers, community members, volunteers, neighbors, friends, parents. It's all the people in the community that make the kids' village. But we as officers of the court, a probation officer or a truancy officer, can help to construct that village. There's more that can be done at the legislative level. Um, I know from being the president of the Detention Association, the Detention Association is not in, as engaged as we could be um, by lawmakers. Um, we're, we've often been the last to know about a law change that's being proposed. And if we were brought into the circle of discussion in the beginning, at the beginning development stages of a piece of legislation, then we would be able to weigh in on what perhaps best practices are, or if it's even a good or a bad idea. The reason why it came together was to uh, have a, I guess, a platform and a venue for detention practitioners to basically share information and work together to improve the conditions of confinement for kids in juvenile detention throughout the state of Louisiana. But we are grateful because we've been able to sustain largely because of the commitment of, of elected officials who've helped in that regard and community organizations who love the work. And, you know, I wish somebody would just, you know, write a, write a check that would enable us to fund all of the programs, all of the big ideas, to really take the creative swings necessary to build the infrastructure and, and fulfill the promise uh, that I believe that we make in a social contract to the children that are born here, to the families that are born here, that yes, you can be educated here. You can be safe here. If things go wrong, there is a net to catch you. Um, unfortunately, I think because of the groundswell of things that we deal with, the net may be breaking. So we need help for that net.